All right, so Twitch has launched a DJ program. This is a first of its kind program where Twitch is actually trying to tackle the music copyright struggles that exist today. So this is a partnership with hundreds of companies, including all of the major labels, Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, Sony Music, and a large number of independent labels. One program, millions of songs. Welcome to the Twitch DJ program. So who is this program for? This is for creators who live stream them DJing. This is not for creators who play copyright music in the background. I'm sorry, this will not work for you. This is not for creators who DJ like once a month and then they stream like games and other other things like i don't think this program is really going to work if you don't if dj is not like a main focus of your channel because of the program limitations and the, the the restrictions around the program so i have some mixed feelings about this so this says that the program will launch july slash august 2024 i live stream the vast majority of popular music and benefit from new promotional and discovery opportunities the twitch dj program is a first of its kind offering that makes it possible for djs to do what they do best so they talk about the problem djs face unique challenges that's the problem why hasn't it changed rights and licensing for dj content on the internet is complex the future a vibrant music community unleashed djs can finally promote and monetize their creativity while compensating musicians who make the music they stream there's a lot of positive testimonial from steve aoki grandmaster flash don pairing on uh and anastasia rose official so how does it work the Twitch DJ program lets you stream DJ sets using the vast majority of popular music. A searchable catalog constantly updated with new releases means you'll have a full view of the millions of tracks that are covered to stream as a part of this offering. Cool. So it has a catalog that you can go through and double check and rely on. Neat. I wonder if they're repurposing the uh, Twitch. They had some a Twitch music program. Soundtrack was what it was called. It was very bad. Um, but maybe they repurpose the, the tech for that. I'm just guessing. For the first time in Twitch history, we'll be launching and promoting an official DJ category, which is going to launch in a few months. So my concern about this, my criticism about this, is this divides the music category. Right now, if you DJ, if you play songs, if you sing, you're in the music category. And this is bringing an entirely different category to an entirely different place. I tend to be against providing more categories because it just reduces discovery. The only way the DJ category gets found is if people either search for it or they go to the browse tab. Now, for most people, the browse tab is uh, sorted from highest viewers to lowest viewers. And right now, you know, there's no DJ tab, but music is in the third slot. It's not that bad. 18,000 viewers. That's a pretty healthy community. Now with a DJ category, now the DJ category will also have to perform on its own. So the music category has less viewers to move it to the top and DJ will have to try to get up here and get this cover as well. What I think would be better is within music, you have subcategories, you have nice you have a follow button, you have all this blank space. How about some nice buttons here that allow you to filter based on, uh, you know, karaoke versus DJ versus con, you know, like whatever, like whatever you need to like break it down to, right? And I, I'm not in the music category, so maybe they have different opinions, but I have seen this happen before with art. If anyone remembers uh, art and crafting all being in one category, Eventually, they broke it down into like five different subcategories, and it totally just destroyed people's careers. There was just no viewership. Everything was too spread out, and uh, it really fractured that community in a, in a very negative way. Now, Twitch ended up putting that back into one. I think that, that there should be a, there's a better way to segment DJ. That's my little soapbox on that, okay? All right. New discovery opportunities. We want DJs to grow, so they're going to be eligible for front page opportunities and recommendations. Sure. Uh, more promotions and community programs. Uh, more promotional campaigns. Okay. What are the terms of this? So what are the rules? DJs face the challenges of takedowns, muted streams, and bans across many of the major services. To tackle these issues for Twitch DJs, we've had several ongoing discussions with music companies to develop a solution. After several years, we finally reached an agreement that makes it possible for both DJs to use popular music and musicians to be paid when their music is used in live DJ sets. 
which I'm guessing this means that they might like DJs might have to use the catalog, which I don't know how that incorporates into their tooling. I guess otherwise they're doing some listening the same with the, with their muted IDs. I don't know, but they'd have to be able to know what's being played in order to give them compensation. As DJs on Twitch, we've never had discovery to begin with. There's occasional connection between musicians on Twitch and DJs on Twitch, but not much. Potential searchability is one of the best things about this. But why couldn't you do that within music as a whole? Like the the, the number one stream right now is DJ. The second, the top number two stream is DJ. I mean, I can tell clearly by there's a DJ button. And if I click this, then I'm finding all the streams that use the DJ tag. And then I think what they could do is draw attention to DJ as a category within music. Like, so you're not fracturing your viewership. You can't search genres, et cetera, when looking for DJs. You wouldn't be able to do that in a DJ category either unless the streamer provides tags to do so. So providing a separate category doesn't solve that. It's just going to make discovery harder for y'all. I mean, it just that's what's happened in the past. So yeah, they're going to bloat it with front page stuff. So they're going to inflate it artificially, but... I think you'd want people within here to be discovered. Earnings sharing. We set aside a portion of earnings generated by your channel to be paid to musicians via... So this is where it gets very confusing. You never ever get on the front page. Now at least it's possible. Yeah, for sure. But again, you don't need a separate category to do that. Like they, We set aside a portion of earnings generated by your channel to be paid to musicians via the music companies that represent them. These costs will, be, will vary across different monetization products. So, so this I had to reread many times to figure out what they're saying. And it's vague. And this is, to me, very concerning because they are doing a subsidy program. And that is uh, typically just not a good sign <laughs> uh, that they're going to subsidize the first year to get you used to it. I don't know. To me, that's a that's, uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I would pay attention to what the terms are. So we don't know how much it's going to be. We don't know the impact. We don't know what it's going to be for different products. For most streamers, Twitch will be splitting these costs 50-50 with you. While we are prohibited from sharing the exact rates up front, our subsidy program will make sure that these costs will come in gradually over time as we invest more in promoting DJs and attempting to grow overall viewership in this category. So it says that these costs will vary across different monetization products. They're taking a portion maybe of your ads, your bids, your subs. This is where we have to have a conversation because, and this, this, talks, this uh, goes back to what I was talking about earlier with YouTube, where if I play a 45 second clip of copyright music, I lose monetization to the entire video. Even if it, the video is three hours long, I cannot make money off a three hour video because 45 seconds of that contain copyright music. And that person is getting all the money, which to me is wrong. And so I have concerns about what the split looks like and 50, 50 getting. So, so splitting the cost 50, 50, that means Twitch and you are splitting the cost, but of what percent of your sub, of your bits, of your ads, of what percent? are they getting so the fact that that's not out here is I like I'm, I, I can only be concerned I can't say oh it's not that bad because they don't actually share any concrete information on what the take is for the musician and personally I think that the rates should be different I think ads that that makes sense for the musician for the uh the right holder to get revenue from ads um from bits during the stream i think so i think that they could get a portion of bits subs i want to argue a little bit more for because i think when people subscribe to a streamer they're subbing not because the music is good i mean yeah they're having a good time but i think what gets someone to sub to you know like most streamers is they want to support that person and that personality in the show and you know, it's more about the person doing the DJ than it is about the music that's being played, I think, when it comes to subbing. So I am very curious, very curious about what the split is for the different monetization products. And they do re-explain that down here. How did the earnings work? There are no upfront fees. A portion of DJ channel earnings 
will be shared with music rights holders for the benefit of musicians, which is sharing these costs with DJs proportional to your deal terms. For example, if you're on a 50-50 split with Twitch, the associated DJ costs will be split evenly. Wait, someone correct me on this. Does this mean if you have a 70-30 split that you're paying 70% also of the split? Um, okay. I just, I don't, I'm not liking this. While we are prohibited from sharing the exact rates up front, I, I can't wait for this to come out. This is going to come out eventually. I hope. I mean, it'd be good for the industry to get this more transparent. We're offering a subsidy program that will enable you to forecast the impact. DJs who haven't qualified yet for Twitch monetization programs will not be impacted financially. Twitch is covering the costs associated with non-monetizing DJs. Gotcha. As, so, so my first thought was, oh, well, just don't monetize your channel. You can just monetize through other services, right? But look at this. As you grow and are offered, offered access to the Twitch affiliate program, you will be expected to join the program. So you will have to have a monetized channel. And Twitch is going to front page your ass until you qualify, by the way. <laughs> so you have to become a monetized creator. Twitch is not going to foot the bill. So going back up to the subsidy, right? To help DJs understand and adjust to the change in earnings, we'll be subsidizing the difference through a one-year on-ramp while the service grows. Enrolled DJs will be topped off for 12 months from program launch, starting at 100% of what they would be paid out prior to the offering. Which, obviously, this is a good thing. It gives creators a time to understand what the impact is on their earnings. Um, so we'll see what happens. See how this affects text DJs. Now, you will not be able to save VODs, clips, or highlights. So any content that you make from your DJ sets, you need to record locally. DJs opted into the program will not be able to save VODs, clips, or highlights to Twitch. VODs, clips, and highlights involve different rates than live streams. So this is fact. Um, there are different licenses required. And this doesn't really change much for DJ or musicians, right? Like their VODs are probably getting muted anyways. Uh, so... Nothing really changes there. Record your VOD locally. That's pretty pretty straightforward. I don't think there would be a way that they would allow a, like acquiring that license, to be fair. Um, because Twitch doesn't really monetize VODs that much. It's not really worth the pain. Okay, so the program is optional. So if you're a DJ and you're like, I don't like this, and also I just don't want to play that music, you don't have to join. But yes, if you, if you live stream DJ sets and you don't have the rights to do so outside the program, you'll need to join or be exposed to takedowns. Uh, you can't play pre-release music and it is for DJs only. Again, this is for people who actually actively DJ and not for people who just play music in the background. You'd think that'd be more accessible to do, but I, I, I don't know, maybe it could come now. Um, the question is how much revenue would you be willing to give up to be able to play popular music in the background of your streams depending on on what the number is like if it was a portion of subs and bits i would not but if it was a portion of ad rev for only the streams where i do play copyright music i would love to bring back the days of doing our 90s music where we're just like singing having a good time playing games like you know had some good times before the dmc apocalypse i don't know it could be interesting any other questions that haven't been answered? This program applies to streamers who use recorded music on Twitch. If you perform music live or are a music producer that streams your own creative process, you do not need to opt into the program. When you participate in this DJ program, you're allowed, you are allowed by Twitch to play music from the DJ catalog. Otherwise, subscribing to a music service or buying a CD or digital audio download typically does not allow you to share that music. Um, once you've opted into the program, you'll be able to stream, stream similarly to how you streamed in the past. But again, please use the DJ music catalog, but you will stream the music from your hardware software. Oh, interesting. Once you join the program, you're free to stream as a DJ in any Twitch category you choose, but we recommend streaming in the DJ category to maximize your exposure. I'm a part-time DJ and I stream other kinds of content. This program is designed to enable DJ streams and for monetizing DJs. As it requires a revenue sharing arrangement to cover the costs associated. If most of your streaming is not as a DJ, 
we recommend setting up two channels, one for your DJ performances and another for your non-DJ. Because if you join this program, it is going to be all of your revenue getting shared. Just straight up. I don't think it's going to be based on whether you play the music or not. Um, if you play other games, you're just going to be locked into this. Like, I, I don't, I, to me, it sounds like you're making a totally different agreement and you're going to have a revenue sharing with the rights holders no matter what, even if you go and play, you know, Call of Duty for a stream. So this is, if you have a DJ channel and you want to do games and stuff or non-DJ content, you might want a second channel. That's again, something to heavily consider. If you are part-time, if you're doing part-time DJ, this program probably isn't worth it for you. So overall, I think this is very interesting that Twitch took so much initiative to make this happen. The music category is pretty big and we're uh, like, uh, this is like a few years late. Um, you know, Twitch music did explode in 2020, but it, it also was the same year we had a DMCA apocalypse because Twitch failed to keep up with the times and monitor their platform and they waited till there were repercussions. That being said, it definitely is a step in the right direction to, uh, you know, DJ content being allowed to stream on Twitch. I think that's a very unique uh, uh, appeal to streaming on Twitch now. So I definitely see that it can be worth it for many DJs. But I, I do have concerns about the revenue sharing because we don't know what that looks like. I'd be very curious to see how that plays out. And again, I don't think that adding a separate DJ category is the right way to, to do that, to segment users. I think there's better ways within music as a whole. There's ways that they could potentially link link those together, but uh, that, that to me is just questionable. Overall, again, step in the right direction. Have some concerns. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see if this affects anything, any other aspects of music in the future on Twitch. There is, it is a struggle to make big changes like this. Like this probably took a ton of time, money and effort to make happen. I think it's interesting because it is niche. It is niche. And I know that Dan Clancy has like a background and a passion for music. So that's why I think that this happened. But whether it's worth all the time and effort and money it took to build this, that remains to be seen. We'll see how big music and DJing can grow on Twitch with the, these, this new program. With being able to stream popular music, will that make DJ streams more entertaining? Will that attract more, more so like you know, popular artists to stream on Twitch? And then that will grow the category as well, right? So there's there are the, Twitch is making a bet that they can grow grow music on Twitch. And live streaming your DJ is is like it makes a lot of sense, especially if you you're on tour, you can double dip. Like there's there's a lot of things that make sense here, but. It is, um, it's a gamble. It is a gamble. So we'll see what, what makes of it. But I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about it. Uh, are you a DJ on Twitch? Are you applying to the program? Are you, what are your concerns for the community? What is the community saying? I'd love to hear what y'all think about it. This is just my semi outside perspective on, on the, the, the program. So very curious to hear what y'all think.